this is a redo. So I had a video, I deleted, I deleted it, I made a mistake, and I'm redoing it. I want to look at this video, and this video shows uh, a Tesla truck crash test. And I want to use video analysis to get some information about what kind of acceleration it has and how, how big of an impact it has. So I'll link uh, this video in the description down below. And that is not it. Oh wait, here it is. And uh, I'm gonna analyze this video with Tracker Video Analysis, which I will also link down below. So Tracker Video Analysis is a free video analysis program. The basic idea is that if you can, if you know the scale of a system, you can click on an object in that in each frame and get position time data. So I've already loaded it in here. Let me make this a little bit better. There we go. Um, okay, so let's just jump forward until we want to end. So I have the car moving right here, and that's where I'm gonna start. Um, that first start, it had some stuff in there that I didn't want. So what I'm going to do is to uh, first set this as the first frame in my video. To do that, um, you can just, once you get the video, you can just drag that video right into here and it'll load and that's how you can get it in here. Now to adjust the video properties, this little icon up here that looks like a film, which is kind of odd, right? Because it's not film, but that's fine. You click that and it says start frame. So down here I see a start frame of 37. So I'm just going to put 37 right there. And you'll notice also this says a frame rate of 30. It's not 30 frames per second, but that's the playback frame rate. That's the, the metadata in the video. It says play it at 30 frames per second, but it's clearly not that. So we're going to need to fix that. Right here you see that it's 35 miles per hour. So we can use that to fix the frame rate. So the next thing that we need to do is to set the scale of the system, right? I need to know how long things are. I've already looked up the length of the Cybertruck and it's not that. Uh, let me look up the length of the Cybertruck. Look it up again. Okay. So go down here and let's type in uh, length of Tesla Cybertruck. Um, so it's two. Okay, let's just convert that. So copy that to and say boom. I didn't copy it. Okay, let's type it. 223.7 inches in meters. And so I get 5.68. So that's the size. Now I'm going to switch back down here and I'm going to scale the video. So the uh, up here there is a tool that says. Uh, it has a, what's a tool called? Show calibration tool. So I click that new calibration stick and you will see this little blue line here that has a, a length of one meter. That's my calibration stick. So what I want to do is stick one end of that square on this side of the truck. And I'm not sure it says, I'm going to put it right here. I don't know where that distance is measured from. I'm going to put the other one way over here. Again, I'm not completely sure how far. And I'm going to change that one to five, click it, 5.68. So now that size is 5.68 meters. And when I click things on here, it'll measure it in terms of that. The next thing I'm going to do is to show the location of the origin. These little magenta uh, lines here say, show or hide the coordinate axis. I click that and there's my origin, but I'm actually gonna move this, you don't have to. I'm gonna move it over here so that I'm always dealing with positive values. Um, okay, other than that, I'm ready to start collecting data. This is not too hard. What I, This video, you'll notice that um, it seems to be uh, a perpendicular view. The camera does not move, so that's all good stuff. So I don't need to worry about adjusting the frame uh, or the coordinate system in each frame. It should be fine. I will go up here to track and click new point mass. Now I need to pick a location to track. Um, and I'm going to treat the car as the vehicle as a rigid body. So anywhere on there I can track. Um, I'm going to, I just want to look for something that's easy to see. So I'm going to use this little corner right there. So let's zoom in so we can see that a little bit better. So I'm going to use this, the corner of the window right there. If I hold down the shift key, my cursor changes to this little target and I just click. And then it moved, it, it marked a point and it moved the video one frame ahead. And then I'll just keep doing this. Now you'll notice I clicked it and it did not move. 
I click and it moved. Now I'm going to click it and it did not move. Did not move. Moved. So you'll see this like stuttering effect. I am not 100% sure. Let me just talk to you while I, I mark these points because, you know, I have to talk about something. Otherwise, it would just be awkward silence. But I, I'm pretty sure that what happens is if the original uh, video is in a particular frame rate and the output video when it's edited is a different frame rate, you get these repeated frames. And that's the only way for that uh, conversion to make sense. Let's say I'm going from 25 frames per second to 30, which this is obviously not that then you, have a, you, you don't have a one-to-one -one frame ratio, so you have to do something. Okay, so it, 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 you, there's a way to fix this, but you don't need to. Um, everything will work out fine in the end. Just trust, trust the process of, of moving along. So I'm going to keep clicking, and this is not that much data. It's pretty easy to deal with. Uh, just clicking that one location. There is an auto tracker uh, that you can use to uh, automatically mark the location of something in each frame, but uh, I, I find I'd rather be in manual control uh, when things get, sometimes things can go a little weird and, and I just don't want that to happen. And you'll notice here that it's not moving as fast. Over here on the graph, we can see that it's slowing down and I wanna get it all the way to stopped if at all possible. Is that good? No, they're still moving. You'll notice this little dummy head's moving forward. And if you want, th that'd be a fun thing to analyze the motion of that head too. Uh, that'd be kind of fun, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just doing the truck. It looks like it's bouncing back a little bit. Okay, so I'm good enough right there. Uh, you also notice this is the X position of the car as a function of time. This is the Y position of the car as a function of time. And the, the Y position should be constant, but it does actually, you'll notice that the car, when it collides, it kind of, it kind of shifts up a little bit like that, right? Uh, so it does move up a little bit, but that's from 1.39 to 1.42 meters, so not much at all. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and figure, figure out the time scale here. I'm going to right click on my X position as a function of time vid, uh, data here. And I'm gonna right click and go to analyze. And it will bring up this graph. Now, I know that uh, this is 35 meters per second before the collision. So the position versus time, uh, if I find the slope of that, it should be a, the same speed. And I've already done the conversion. So 35 me miles per hour is 15.65 meters per second. So it should be 15.65. So let's highlight this. I just want that part. I know that's before the collision. And I'm going to analyze uh, curve fitter line. And right here, oh, you can't see it because my, my face is covering it up. Right here, you see the parameter. This is x equals a, t plus b. So a is the slope, and it is 0.53, because it's 5.3 times 10 to the negative 1, right there. So let's write that down. And I want to determine what the real frame rate is. Okay, so I'm going to switch over here to paper. This is where I messed up before because I didn't have the microphone on when I switched to the paper. Switching to the paper. Let's see. Microphone still on. Okay. That's not right. That's the velocity. Uh, okay, so we know that the velocity, as I measured right here, is 0 0.53. And I don't like this marker. 0 0.53 meters per second. But those that's not real time. I'm going to call that seconds prime, right? That's my fake time seconds. And that should be equal to 15.65 meters per real seconds. Now I can get a relationship between fake seconds and real seconds. So the meters cancel, and I get seconds prime is equal to 0 0.5 three seconds divided by 15.65. So that's my ratio. Now I have a frame rate, FR, of 30 frames per second prime, right? That's, it's not real time. And I can multiply that by one second prime divided by this, which is 0 0.53, 15.65. Five seconds. 
And so now those will cancel and I'll get frames per second. And that will tell me the real frame rate. Yeah, that's right. Okay, where's my calculator? I have it over here. Okay, here's my new 48G Hewlett Packard. I found this in, the, in a storage place somewhere and I like it because it's RPN and I like RPN. So, uh, so let's do this dirty. Enter uh, 15.65 times and then 0.53 divided by. And I get 885.8. Frames per second. So that's the real frames per second. Okay, so now let's go back to the video. Where am I right here? And I am going to change my frame rate. So back to the actual clip editor right here, I'm going to click that, and here it says frame rate of 30. I'm going to change that to 885.8, and then I'll say OK. Now, it didn't update the data if you and I don't know why but if I go over here to the data and look it's from zero to two something if I click on a point it switched right then it fixed all the data now let's go back and refine the slope and uh, and then we can see if it's what it should be so go back to analyze and I'm going to just highlight this part and I get 16 and that's good enough right uh, for a lot of reasons, that's going to be good enough for me. And the frame rate might actually be something like 900 frames per second. Um, that makes sense if it's in 30 frames per second. It's a, it's a nice multiple. And you could play around with the frame rate. But again, I don't know the exact distance. I don't know if I had like the length of the window or something like that. It might be better to do. But this is just a, a rough estimate. A pretty good estimate though. Now what I want to do is to find the acceleration on impact. I'm going to assume that it has a constant acceleration, which it may not have, but I'm going to do that anyway. So if I go down here and I'm going to highlight, let's move this up a little bit just so I can see. I'm going to highlight this part of the data that looks like a parabola. And then I'm going to change this analyze curve fitter to a parabola. There you go. And you'll see that that fit is nice fit, right? And we have these parameters of A, B and C, and in fact, it doesn't show you yet yeah, times. It, this is a problem. I've made a mistake before. It, it doesn't always show you the scientific notation, so make sure you zoom in so that you can see that if you need to move things around. So this uh, 159 is the coefficient. Let me switch back to the paper real quick just to remind you that you already know. If I have uh, x as a function of time, the kinematic equation for constant acceleration, x0 plus v0t plus 1 half a t squared. So this term is 159, and that's equal to 1 half a. So a is going to be 2 times 159 meters per second squared. So that would be 160 times 2 is 2 is 320, but then I'm at, so it's 2, wait, 328 meters per second. I shouldn't do things in my head. Sometimes when you do things in your head, you think you're being cool. So 159 enter two times 318. See? That was, that's right. 318. 318 meters per second squared. So I now know the acceleration on impact, and that's kind of important. Okay. Um, so next, let's look at one, one more thing. So switching back to the computer, one more thing. The other thing I want to know is the crumple zone size. That's how far it moves during that time. Uh, that one's pretty easy to get. I can just go over here and say, okay, let's, let's look at this. I'm going to zoom out to fit, and I'm going to back up until right before it starts hitting. Okay, that's kind of hard to tell. Let's say right there. Let's say it's in, it makes contact right there. Um, and I'm going to move this over so that you can see the X position, and I'm going to write this down, is 3.956 meters. That's the X position on contact. Now, what's the farthest X it gets? We're just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to keep moving forward until it's crumpled. The airbag went off. Look at that. You can analyze the airbag, too. 
There's a whole bunch of stuff you could do in this. It'd be kind of fun. Okay, about right there. So now we're down to 3.275. 3.275. Now the difference between those two will be my M crumple zone. So I'm going to use my calculator. Let's see, uh, the light's not very good. Drop, and it's 3.956, enter 3.275 minus, and I get 0.681, which I think is a little higher than what I got before, but 68 centimeters. That seems a little bit high, but still, that's how you would get that. And there you go. Now you've done a video analysis. Um, like I said, this is a great video for that because uh, it, it's the camera doesn't, you don't need to move that camera around, so it's really easy to do. And on top of that, the, there's not that many frames to analyze, so you don't have to do that much clicking. Link to this video down below. Link to tracker video analysis down below. It's free, runs on everything. Uh, it, it, it actually has an online version too, a web version, so you don't have to install it, which is nice because the actual version uses Java and you know sometimes installing Java products can be a little bit. That's that. I uh, hope you enjoy that. I'll talk to you later.